Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich. Today, we're playing as Ukraine. So, for this campaign, we are just going to be doing the bog standard status quo pro-Germany Ukraine. Um, because, one, I don't think we've actually played a campaign where we've invaded Russia in a while. I don't know if that's, maybe, maybe I'm completely mistaken, but it feels like it's been a while since we've actually invaded Russia. Uh, two, we've done the socialist Ukraine, I want to say like three years ago at this point. And a national populist Ukraine just gets you uh, invaded by both Germany and Russia at the same time, which I don't think we would be able to succeed in. But those, those are my reasonings for why we're going to be doing uh, the run this way. I think there's also the pro-Russia Ukraine that you can do, but we're not going to be doing that. We, we just want to, I think that's the grand coronation we need. Kingdom survives. Because you are... Yeah, you're, you're the pro-Russia party, which we, we don't want to get that... Uh, we don't want them. So, first things first, let's go for our army bonus here. Research, we'll go with all of our basics. Research speed and our two basic industry techs. Following that, our economy right now, our 16 factories, we're at 4, 2, and 10. I think we're going to build one military factory in Kiev to begin with. We'll get our army and navy experience off of you. Do we need trains? I mean, right now we actually have 18. 18 is not a horrible number. So I think we're fine with 18. We also are missing a little bit of tungsten, not a big deal. What are we actually building? Rifles, artillery. Take one off artillery. Let's get a handful of trucks going. We're going to have infinite submarines. We'll finish this one single ship. I mean, what's our navy really going to do? We'll probably end up sending our navy probably into, like, the Mediterranean to maybe help out the Entente with their naval invasion of France. At some point, that seems like the most likely, uh, most likely candidate. Uh, we can deploy up to 31 divisions so we can get 10 more troops. We have no equipment at the moment. Quarter million manpower. We're taking a negative 25% to the Hetman's army. Uh, issue with the Russian language, political power gain minus 20%, negative 5% stability, war support negative 15, recovery rate negative 20, negative 25, uh, okay, very cool. So what do I need to do? Actually, does any one of you replaces that? War planning. Yeah, I actually, I think, like, either of these immediately get to done. Let's just run the Vilda Creek. Organization... Weapons bonus reinforcement rate. Re 5% reinforcement rate is actually kind of incredible. It will allow us to go way above our uh, division limit if we want to. Because, again, our reinforcement rate really is the biggest hamper when it comes to going over the limit, the penalties uh, associated with it. The reinforcement rate will kill you if you're not careful. Um, command power gains kind of garbage. 10% recruit population is not bad. More organization, more planning, more war support, reinforcement rate. Another five. That's 10%. That's a 10% reinforcement rate on top of all the other modifiers like radio and stuff. We can have like a 20% reinforcement rate. Which is absolutely wild. That is, that's an incredible reinforcement rate. Okay, so I, th I think we definitely want to go less to the Village Creek. One else has like more focuses in it. If you weapons, you just add tank for free. You actually also, you also just give us 500 tanks. I mean, just getting, just being given 10 or 500 tanks is pretty good. Breakthrough plus 10% is also really nice. Supply consumption, 10% speed. War support planning speed on this one. Motorized attack plus 5%. I think we are going to go lessons for the Villa Krieg. Um... It's, it seems the best uh, the best choice for us now. But our kingdom. The kingdom of Ukraine was proclaimed its independence with German support on January 25th, 1918. A state of affairs that was quickly ratified by the Peace of Nations Agreement at Brest Litov. An initial experiment with socialism in the form of the People's Republic was swiftly expunged by the German Baku. This operation, led by the strongman and former general of the Russian army, Pavlo Skorpatsky, uh, set the tone for Ukraine's future. It would be a bread basket uh, used by a military aristocratic lead from all across Eastern Europe as a source of food, a convenient market for goods, and a military bulwark against the weakened Russian Republic. 
For a time, the dispute between Germany and its Austro-Hungarian ally over Ukrainian over Ukrainian rumbled on after the Wildkrieg. Uh, eventually, settled on a compromise uh, whereby King Vasily, an Austrian archduke born from Wilhelm Franz von Habsburg, would rule in support of the Skorpatsky, uh, who was a German allied hetman, uh, holds incredible power over both civil and military affairs. By 1927, German involvement in the Austrian Ashlig uh, negotiations meant that Ukraine fell de facto into the hands of the Hetman, the King Vasily becoming an increasingly marginalized figure. Ukraine under the het uh, Hetmanites had become a breadbasket of the Reich's Pact and made its wealthy landowners extraordinarily wealthy at the expense of the Ukrainian peasantry. Now, almost 20 years after the Wildkrieg, the national situation is unstable. The Reich forces uh, the Reich forces us to sell our goods at exclusively to nations within the uh, sphere of influence, while syndicalists gain popularity amongst the downtrodden rural poor and city workers with each passing day. Both the ethnic Russians and the pro-Russian population dream of unification with our former master in the East, while the Ukrainian nationalists proclaim that our king was no more than a German puppet. This is an immutable truth. Despite these uh, many issues afflicting us, our land is prosperous and fertile, our people industrious, and our potential boundless. Fair to say that our government is divided. While Pavlo Skos uh, Skorkopatsky does his best to solve the antagonism between the army uh, constantly uh, consisting of former officers of the Russian Imperial Army and the civil administration, most of which actively supports our current position in the Reich's Pact, many of Ukraine's problems can only be solved when the majority of our population, the Kulaks and the peasants, have an opportunity to sell their substantial agricultural product in Europe beyond the narrow confines of the Reich's Pact. So, one, apparently we shouldn't provoke the presence, but two, apparently our situation really relies on the rest of Europe buying our products, and nothing about that could change between now and, let's say, like, February 5th, 1936. It's smooth sailings from here. Yes, we don't need about, we don't need to worry about you, don't need to worry about you. Could be fine with that. When do you unlock? The agricultural crisis almost shattered Ukrainian economy and civilian country. The king barely controls the country. So I'm assuming this is the Black Monday, um, Black Monday event. We can dissolve the Rada. Succession question has to be after 38. So again, we definitely do not want to invite you into the government. I mean, we technically could and then purge the leftists at the very end to get the succession crisis. Polish with the nationalist. Land reform. We could dissolve the Rada. Promote Ukrainian uh, unity, peasant state. And your stability boost. I don't actually know which route allows us to... Remain coalition splits. Succession crisis. Can I just choose the? Can I just choose who wins in this, or is this based on our previous events? Genuinely, I don't actually know. I guess we'll find out. We'll we'll, we'll find out together here on our uh, on our wonderful stream. Also, probably. Should assign some commanders and field marshals to our military. Okay, not that we're really worried about a war breaking out anytime soon. We've got hopefully three or four years to prepare for that. Yeah, so get our evasion plan ready to go. We do have to worry about Romania a little bit because Romania ends up joining the Moscow Accord. Um, Larian's been elected in France. Uh, Black Monday has happened for the Anglo War, don't care about that. But if Romania ends up joining with the Russians, they would open a front line in Bessarabia, which we need to be, uh, we need to be aware of. So, I mean, if Bulgaria was just to win the, uh, the Balkans War in 37, then we kind of don't need to worry about it, because, like, if Bulgaria wins the Balkan Wars, Romania, Serbia, don't really do anything at that point, I'm pretty sure. Like, their, their focus trees just stop. I mean, Greece could still do something, but they usually join the Entente. But Black Monday has hit Ukraine. A few days ago, the Berlin Stock Exchange plunged into the abyss, throwing Germany's economy into an unprecedented crisis. Now that the crash uh, shockwaves have reached Ukraine, German and Austrian-owned companies have closed down or laid off their workers. Ukrainian Hrvna is losing value, and resource exports are shrinking exponentially. Honestly, not a terrible Black Monday. 10% production cap and negative 25% uh, factory output. Not great, obviously. But it's by no means the, uh, the worst I've ever seen.
The White Guard is a film based on a novel written by the leader of the pro-Russian movement, Mikhail Bulgakov. The film story describes the life of one Russian family in Kiev just after the German occupation in 1918. Main characters are the Russian officers and Ukrainian citizens that participated in the defense of Kiev from those disloyal to the new regime of Ukrainian nationalists and different socialist groups comprising the soldiers of the army of the Hetman uh, Skolaski. I know I'm butchering all these names, I apologize. The film analyzes the relationship between the Russian and the Ukrainians and see by uh, Bulklov as a symbol of national reconciliation. The White Guard encourages the unity of the kingdom and the friendship with its people, although somewhat with radical groups of the local nationals consider the film to be Russian propaganda. So thank you for the uh, political power, I do appreciate it. Okay, so you are still not unlocked. I don't know when you unlock, but hopefully, hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go less to the Vilkri because I want that reinforcement rate. 20% reinforcement rate is... It's, it's just very good. It's very good. And, I mean, at this point, we probably could 18 combat with. I mean, that's fine. You know, to start training 10 right away. Because that's how much we can actually support. Because what else is in this army? You got uh, cavalry, you've got engineers. Do you actually require a lot of support equipment? We don't actually make support equipment. Which is kind of an issue. Let's remove you. Just for the time being. We're now only missing 100, which is not, which is not so bad. Actually, we now have positive 350 because we no longer have the engineers in our army. We're gonna go speed and fire power first. Well, what can we do? We have 350, um... I mean, you should all not have your support equipment. You need rifles, you need artillery, and you need... You need manpower? No. You just need you need guns and you need your artillery. And we're, we're slowly building them. Very, very, very slowly. Do we have a, um... Do you have anything in here that just gives me military factories? Begin the recovery. Two civilian, two military... Basic resources, okay. Building slots is kind of ass. You just are... You just are a 5% consumer goods penalty. Like, you're actually just bad. Like, okay, so you're not great. You're one swing factory. You're also just terrible. Why, why would I ever do the thing with the Polish farms? This, all three of these are not very good. Okay, Mosley's been elected chairman of the TUC. So, I mean, I guess everybody's going, uh... Everybody's going totalist this run. We'll see if Italy uh, follows suit. They elect Mussolini. Just get the, uh, just boom, 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 all three of them totalist. I mean, Russia's gone for Dmitry Romanov, so they're not going to go national populist. Which, I mean, is fine. Do we have an election? We do not... That's into the Krieg. What do we want to get first? Probably research bonuses, reinforcement rate, and um, organization or max planning. Well, nice. Are, are not really necessary right now. Whenever you, whenever you start a Kaiserreich runner, I guess Holy Four in general. For the first, like, two years, you don't want to get focuses that give you, like, military bonuses, right? Because you're not really going to be fighting a war right away. You want to be getting, you know, industry bonuses or research bonuses early on. Make the most use out of that. Okay, promises of peace is kind of garbage. Our war sports are, like, already, like, not very good. Can we do early mobilization? We could add 150 political power. We're getting 0.46 per day, which is awful. Volunteer only. So we will be getting some more recruit population very soon, about 0.4%. <laughs> Not that we really actually need it so, so badly. Radio, uh, radio, coordination. You know what? Give me the 1918 uh, upgrade first. Because I don't want to use one of my 50% bonuses on on you. you wanna do, we want to use our research bonuses, I think, for things that are ahead of time. You have no aircraft, 72 trucks. Let's go up to... I'm going to say 500 trucks before we kind of shift things around a little bit. 
75, ranking 6 guns per day. I mean, not incredible. Like, at the, at the moment, it's going to take us about, uh, fuck, what is that, like, 5 years? Do you get enough rifles for all of our units? 150 days. Okay, South Africa's actually gone Cyniclist. Well, they're Radical Solutions right now, but I think eventually they might go Cyniclist or Totalist. You don't really see Socialist South Africa. They don't, it doesn't actually happen that often. An agricultural crisis. Since the Valkyrie Ukraine has traditionally relied upon uh, its value grain trade uh, with the German Empire in order to maintain its economic security. Unfortunately, the current social economic issues afflicting the Reich have meant that they are now far more interested in protecting their own farmers than taking a political unpopular move by subsidizing Ukrainian uh, agriculture. This could be very dangerous for us, as without the support of the German market, our ruling class of agrarian landowners could find it difficult to maintain their dominance in the countryside. Okay, well, I mean, this isn't very good, so we're just going to lose two civilian factories, as well as 20% stability. So I guess you weren't so bad, Black Monday, uh, but the events following it are, are not great. I mean, losing two civilian factories? I have i don't think I've ever seen a Black Monday focus that actually just takes factories away from you. I don't like it. Obviously, I, I prefer to have my... Uh, I would prefer to have, you know... For my factories. Okay, we got our 50% research bonus. Are you... You're still not here yet. I mean, I think this, this will I think automatically get bypassed at some point. Add to air bases, air doctor reduction. 150 free planes? I mean, that's pretty good. Max entrenchment, more population recruitment would be nice. War support would be good as well. But I need all three of you. Is there anything in the Navy that works for us? I mean, three naval... Actually, three naval dockyards is pretty good. Naval batteries. It allows us to probably build... How many convoys? We have 30 convoys. Yeah, I mean, we're actually going to revive the Navy. Or review the Navy, I should say. We're going to do some naval focuses, which I don't really do very often. But right now, we have two dockyards. If we can get our way up to, you know, like more than double it with this one focus... Use that to build some convoys. I'd be happy with that. Before the agricultural crisis, pro-Russian movements were rather weak and disunited, ensuring that they didn't pose too much of a threat to our government. This crisis has led to a shocking rise in popularity, support for those organizations, and an increase in their willingness to cooperate. Uh, yesterday, a famous Russian writer from Kiev, Mikhail uh, Borklov, proclaimed the unification of the three largest movements into a single organization known as the Faith of Nations, or the VIN. Supported by the Ukrainian church, heavily uh, influenced by the Moscow Patriarch, the population of southern and eastern Ukraine may, uh, and many high-ranking officers, this movement could prov uh, provoke serious instability in some parts of our country. Okay, so there's a very large uh, group of our population right now that wants to join Russia. Of course, we're not going to be doing that. Because I think if you go down the pro-Russian route, you just get annexed, I'm pretty sure. Which, I don't think I need to tell you, Kind of goes against the spirit of a let's play. I mean, I guess we did do the MOJ at some point when that when that came out probably like two years ago now, which at the end you just get annexed as well. But that was different, kind of. Okay, we got free dockyards. I'm gonna put you into submarine production. Because again, you will give us five naval base, you know, that's the three naval dockyards. I mean, the, the, the naval base is f fine. I don't really know how that does anything for us. Here's another naval dockyard. So that's, I mean, that's... Do I need you? This one, the, the, the Port of Sevastopol, they don't think we care about too much. I think the Odessa Harbor is kind of more important. Naval doctrine, research bonuses. And then the other stuff we can, we can just flat out ignore. All, all of this. Garbage. We care about you. Because we can start building convoys early on, which, as I've said uh, earlier this episode, any kind of civilian thing that you can do early on is usually better. Military stuff is better done, like, 38. And then probably want to go... I mean, like, again, do we need... I mean, it's a research tech for fighters, so we might actually want to go to deploy the new fighter prototypes. Okay, Ivan, a young and talented officer, has returned to Ukraine. He was a member of the Volunteer Ukrainian Division, which supported our German allies in regional conflicts in Middle Africa. His book on the banks of the Congo and Safari previously made him the most popular Ukrainian soldier and writer in the entire country. Chernyakovsky 
has been uh, promoted to the rank of Colonel and will soon become the commander of the 1st Cossack Division, which ensures his popular figure will be command an elite branch of the Ukrainian army. Well, thank you for this ability boost. I, I do actually need it. So I appreciate you. Give me the industry bonus now. Who has actually the most technologies? Extra opportunities, five from Germany. 52 by Ruthenia. Why does Morocco 59 technologies? How do you have 59 technologies you don't have research? Is there even 59 technologies in this game? Okay, well, I mean, there are. Oh, you know why? It's probably like all this, all the naval stuff, right? Because, I mean, you know, we have three, four, five, you know, three, five, seven, ten. Yeah, Morocco probably doesn't have any, like, naval bonuses. Do we have naval re invasion research? We don't. Okay. Do I need it? Maybe? Are you a naval? I mean, you gotta remember, the Caspian Sea is actually a naval zone. But, I mean, how are you gonna get a boat over here? I don't, I don't actually know. Okay, to my troll, Donskov is a renowned ideal ideologue of Ukrainian nationalism and has been deported from Galicia, where he had been carrying out operations to urge the local Ukrainian minority to resist the Austro-Hungarian administration. He now claims that our silence in the crisis has exposed the weakness of our government, and that's why Ukraine should be ruled by real Ukrainian patriots. His slogan, Ukraine for Ukrainians, is attracted to many citizens, especially in Western Ukraine. And graffiti has been spotted in a number of towns. This could be dangerous for the cabinet since we've already lost considerable support in the East. So East Ukraine hates us, West Ukraine hates us. Why, you know who loves us? Berlin. Okay, give me one more military factory. We're building some fighters. Honestly, I'm okay with that, but I think we need, we need rifles more than anything. Okay, Sternberg is remaining in power in Mongolia, so we might see him align with the... Might see him align with uh, Moscow. Not that that changes anything for us personally. I'm not too worried about what Mongolia is going to do in the... Uh, in, in the war. Here, okay, view the navy. Follow that up with uh, fortifying the Odessa Harbor so we can get some convoys being built. I'm trying to think. I mean, Romania, Greece, and Serbia. All three of them could potentially join Russia, which would kind of block our uh, support here. Chomsky criticizes the Ukrainian government. Alexander Skumsky, a prominent Ukrainian syndicalist, has opened a third Congress of the left SRs. He demands that the government takes extreme measures to defend the workers and peasants from, uh, from poverty brought on by the global crash. To further his agenda, he has proposed a new program of major social and economic reforms aimed at helping Ukraine overcome the crisis. The controversial figure is uh, going to present his plan to the Rada soon. Well, of course, we don't want him... Uh... I mean, again, you could, we could do... We could invite him in the government and then just purge them at the very end and not go syndicalist. Faded Ukrainian monarchy... You know, I, I don't know. More stability, less support for syndicalist. Political... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking Dissolve the Rada may, might be our best option here. Oh, there's our future. Okay. Our Supreme Rada has been uh, too left and never really supported Trotsky's ideals as Hetman. The king has been shaken out of his legislative stupor to grant him the authority to dissolve the Rada and form the new loyal uh, state senate. Okay. Realizing the scale of threat, Hetman decided to bargain with the pro-Russian VIN and national nationalist OUN. Both parties uh, get to feed them action in regions where they are especially popular. They return to support uh, the regime and the king and the Radas through a confidence supply agreement. Genuinely, I don't actually know which one of these we want. The agricultural crisis almost shattered the Ukrainian economy. The stability of many of our nation's most important institutions... Uh, the king's grip on the country is weakening by the hour. Peasants loyal to the hetman want major land reform. Pro-Russian malcontents and Ukrainian nationalists demand radical measures. And the cynicalists are mobilizing workers all over the country. Various political movements struggle with our power in a teetering nation. Soon we'll have to choose who will lead Ukraine into the future. So then you will be automatically completed. And then I think at this point... It's going to be a good time for us to end this episode for today. So I think, uh, thanks everybody for watching my Zanthlam. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Not doing thumbs up down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.